As we are set to dive into the content of today's webinar, we will begin by introducing our guest speaker, Ian McDonald, Director of Consumer Marketing and Experience at Trader. With his extensive experience of increasing market share and repositioning brands, Ian has been in instrumental to Trader and along with his team has increased visits by 164% in just 24 months, increased desktop market share alone by 112%, and increased unneeded brand awareness by 81% while simultaneously growing Trader's audience by 803% within the first 12 months. Ian, over to you. Thank you and uh, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing some insights with you from some uh, variety of sources, but one of the main ones that we're going to be using is a piece of primary research that we do here at AutoTrader every year, where we speak to over 1,500 consumers and we ask them about their most recent car buying uh, experience, how they went about it, how long it took them and so on. So this is primary research which we've conducted ourselves. Uh, I'm going to be sharing some of the insights that we discovered from that with you because uh, ultimately it's going to help you to be able to understand the consumer better in the sort of digital age, sell more cars and grow your business. So there's three main sections of the webinar today. The first one is taking a look at how consumers are shopping online today. The second one is then looking at the importance of online channels. So you know, we've established that they shop online. What is it within online? What sort of things should you be doing to gain a competitive advantage? And then lastly, we're going to round out with kind of three tips uh, for you and how to influence consumers during this journey that we're going to describe uh, during section one. Uh, so without further ado, we'll get started. So first section is how consumers are shopping online today. So in this part of the survey, we asked, consumers firstly kind of how long they anticipated it would take them to go through the different phases of the buying journey and then we asked them after they'd finished the purchase kind of in reality how long those took so that's kind of interesting to see that they anticipated on average that it would take them 22 days but in reality it only took 16 days so they were all aware that the kind of buying funnel and the journey is shortening all the time thanks to the internet and the proliferation of information and things like that but it's interesting to see that it's becoming even shorter than people would anticipate it would be. Now, in terms of your window of influence within this kind of period, which is you know research and consideration and budget setting and this kind of thing, a really, really short amount of time is spent interacting with dealers, just two and a half days on average. Uh, and the average number of dealers visited physically, uh, that is ahead of the, the actual kind of transaction uh, visit, was only 1.1. So I mean, really the thing to take away from this is these are averages, you know, for some people it will be longer, some people shorter, but the real takeaway from the slide is that the overall process is shortening all the time, and even within that process, the, the, uh, the stage in which there's interaction with dealerships and, and your sort of opportunity to influence a buyer is becoming shorter and shorter, so it's vital for you to be in the right place at the right time. So this is kind of the traditional stages of the journey, as I'm sure we're all familiar with them. And what we're highlighting here is that the, the journey itself hasn't changed. I mean, it's, when it comes to behavior, obviously there's still going to be a trigger at the start where people are thinking, what do I want from a car, considering their lifestyle needs, you know, moving through a wish list, thinking about their budget, and then right through to the end, you know, actually finding a dealership to transact with and making the actual purchase. Those things haven't changed. But what has changed is, as I just mentioned, the length of time this process takes the sources that people use during these different stages, and this is where online has really changed things so much. And then thirdly, there's an awful lot more back and forth between the phases, um, very quick back and forth than there used to be in the past. People used to methodically kind of go through these stages. Now what we're seeing increasingly is people bouncing um, back and forth between stages, going back three steps or forward two steps. And this is all basically because of this amount of information and how convenient it is to be able to complete these tasks, you know, really within hours, uh, even on a mobile phone, because there's so much information and marketplaces and research sources available now. So now let's take a look at, you know, we've established, as I said, that online is uh, very prevalent throughout this process, but what do we mean within online? So down the left-hand side here, we've listed some of the most popular responses from our respondents. And you can see that really up the top, these are the things that we need to be thinking about. When consumers say, yeah, you know, I, I conduct a lot of stages of the journey online, this is what they mean. They mean dealer websites, they mean marketplaces, classified sites, and they mean online expert review sites. 
and you can see as it goes down. So manufacturer's website to a lesser degree, online owner reviews, somewhat important. By the time we get down to things like social media and other, really the findings from this survey are suggesting that you don't need to worry too much about those things. The, the most important things are the ones in green up the top. And as you can see, they are present at every stage throughout the journey. It doesn't really change. Dealer website, marketplace, uh, and expert review sites are pretty prevalent throughout that journey. So let's talk about the importance of online channels, some of those channels that we just described. So we know that people are using them a lot throughout the journey, but how influential are they? What's the importance of them? So here we can see at the top here, we're asking people, so not, we, we know that you say that you use these different sources during the process, but which was the most influential? And you can see that by far the winner was online when compared to these other sources of information that people stated. So in second place, visiting dealerships, and we have friends and family there as well. One thing of interest to note is advertising. So how influential was advertising during that process? A very, very low number of people said that they found that uh, sort of very influential in the top two most influential sources. Likewise with things like magazines, that's probably not surprising. And then we have others in there. But the key takeaway here is that online is used the most and it is the most influential. We can also see on the bottom left here that over half of consumers, and these are people that had bought a car in the last 12 months, remember, they said that they'd found the dealership they ended up transacting with online. And only 11% of people said they found the dealership they transacted with offline. So that might be you know, telephone directory, radio ad, that kind of thing. So again, we can see here it's visualized on the bottom right that the path of purchase is mostly online. So of course, there is going to be a stage where we have to move out of the virtual world and into the real world. And you know, for the time being, at least, people are always going to want to see the car itself, test drive the car, have a face-to-face -face kind of interaction with the, with the dealership representative. And that's re reflected by these uh, gray and black boxes at the end of the process. But you can see that when it comes to the majority of the phases, they're all being conducted online. So really important that you begin to think about not just how you influence consumers during those gray and black boxes right at the end, but how you reach and influence consumers in all the red boxes that come before it. And to that point, when we talk about online, obviously we're all aware that mobile phones are uh, everywhere these days, and almost everybody has one. About one quarter of consumers reported to us that they are using and interacting with mobile apps dedicated to automobiles as part of the process. So again, when we talk about online, we're not just talking about desktop websites. Mobile is growing hugely and quickly in terms of almost just as important as your desktop online presence. So touching on marketplaces, we saw earlier on how important they were throughout the process and then how influential they were. And again, that's backed up by the response to the survey. 80% of car shoppers said they consulted an online marketplace for their next vehicle, which is obviously a, a huge percentage and just underscores the importance of those kind of sites. So now let's take a look at uh, three tips to influence the consumer journey. And we've split these up into kind of visuals, copy, and pricing. So back to what I said earlier about the, uh, the kind of color-coded boxes and all, and all the red with the gray and black. Ultimately, the goal here is to turn these online visits, this online behavior and research, into a physical dealership visit for you. That's where you can exert even more kind of influence, and that's where your sales training and your other skills and uh, things can come into play, and you can actually convert that lead into a sale. So that's really what you're trying to do is take that user from their virtual world where they're surfing between websites and comparing cars and get them to choose your dealership and your car and then establish uh, this kind of physical interaction. So let's take a look at the anatomy of a great listing. And again, this is based on some research. Uh, we did, um, we basically used uh, some technology whereby we would serve lots of different variations, kind of like multivariate testing to a, to a panel of users. And through doing this, we were able to establish what the most important things are to get right uh, when it comes to a listing. But in total, the main thing is to offer as much information as possible. So let's look at some of these aspects. Price. Price is hugely important. And we'll cover this in a little bit more detail later. But when we spoke to survey respondents and we asked them what the most important thing was in the, the physical vehicle that they chose to go and view, 
once they decided on the make model uh, and, and year and things like that, it was price. Price is coming through more and more strongly from consumers as the most important thing. So stating a price and, and making sure it's competitive, etc., uh, is the most important thing that you can do. But we'll, we'll come to that in some more detail later. Secondly, the option of video. Uh, obviously, video is growing in terms of a, a media that's consumed online these days and, and on the internet. And users come to expect that in kind of every facet of online behavior that they're doing. So a video really can um, give a very good feel for the actual vehicle itself. You know, if you do it in some detail, make sure you go in and out of the car, take some time over it, get it right. It can really help to grow the amount of response that you get to your listing. Contact information is obviously vital. Uh, if you do the hard work of you know, setting the price right, doing the video, getting the pictures right, you've got to make sure that people can fi clearly find in a variety of ways how to get in touch with you, whether that's you know, turning up in person or whether it's picking up the phone or sending an email. That contact is vital. You don't want to waste the interest that you've created. Uh, telling the car's story is important as well, you know, particularly linking this back to the price. You know, if you know that, uh, that you are asking for slightly more for a vehicle uh, or slightly less, maybe than what the market average is, explain why that is clearly and prominently in the description. That's your opportunity to uh, explain that, that aspect and also other features of the car in some detail. People want to read this. They, they want to conduct this research um, before they get in touch with you. Uh, so provide it to them. Include any specials, obviously just uh, your kind of basic sales strategy. If you do have any reason, any additional direct response kind of reason why they should get in touch, then make that clear. Map and directions, same logic as the contact information special offers and then lastly one thing that might get overlooked because we're looking specifically at vehicles here we might think well let's just talk a lot about the vehicle but important to users came through in the survey that as well as just the vehicle itself it is important to them that they do business or they get in touch with a dealer that they can trust so explaining why they should buy from your dealership in particular you know trying to include you know your dealership or some kind of physical evidence in the background of video and things like that so they know that they're dealing with a trustworthy dealer uh, and, and they get a sense of kind of what it looks like um, before they get in touch with you. So here's just an example of kind of putting some of these things together when we look at something like a search results page. And I mean, you know, it speaks for itself. That poor merchandising up the top there, we have no photo, um, there's no price. Uh, it, the, the copy it has these kind of stars between it, these asterisks. So all in all, not really a very compelling, doesn't look that professional. And back to that point that I made about you know, the user wants to do business with a trustworthy dealership. This doesn't look like a dealership that has taken enough time over their listing. Compare that with the good merchandising where we have a video, you know, we have a variety of photos so that the user can get enticed by those photos to click through and find out more. The price is clear, it's prominent, if the copy's written well, it doesn't read like um, it doesn't read like a kind of sales flyer, it's not in your face, it, it's just good, good kind of copy that explains about the car and, and what it is. Um, and then obviously you know, we have the clear uh, kind of contact seller. So, but you can see for yourselves uh, the kind of difference this is going to make if you imagine yourself in a consumer's shoes, which car are you more likely to want to find out more about? And we can see this in the next slide, how paramount photos are. So this is the kind of impact that just having a photo can have on your click-through rate from that search results page, even including one photo this is. So you can imagine the impact of including multiple photos in a video and a strong headline and description. So what makes a great photo? Well, it doesn't have to cost a lot of expensive equipment to take a good photo, an effective photo. A lot of it is to do with the framing, you know, not, not cutting off the edges of the car, um, the correct angles. You know, there are certain set angles that we would recommend that you, you just have to take and, and there we, we can let you know what those are. Um, you're probably familiar already, but it's just taking some time over the photo, you know, trying to reduce glare, trying to park it somewhere where it's not and in that direct sunlight where it's going to glare. Uh, you know, if it's winter time, try and get it inside, kind of out of the snow and things like that. I myself have seen lots of pictures of cars on our site where there's lots of snow around it. Not very appealing. So following some of these kind of best practices can really help with enticing those click-throughs and beating your competition on that search results page. Thinking about video, which I also mentioned is important. So you might not know where to start when making a video of a car, perhaps more familiar with taking the photos. So here's just a few tips that can help uh, getting started with using videos. 
the first thing is to, to show the actual vehicle, um, the, the actual one that is for sale. Do a 360 walk around of it, cover all angles. If you miss an angle, then the consumer is probably going to suspect that there's something you don't want them to see at that angle. So do the full 360 degree walk around. Keep it brief, keep it under two minutes. Um, that should be enough time to go around the car, go inside the car, and probably lift up the hood, start the engine, that kind of thing. Try and do the kind of things that a consumer would probably do themselves uh, when they turn up to, to view the car in person, because it just saves them time, and it also means when they turn up at the dealership, they're that much more satisfied and that much more closer to purchasing than they would be if they had to do all that stuff when they turn up themselves. Uh, think about having a compelling host, someone who's passionate about the vehicle. I'm sure that you have um, salespeople already who are you know, gifted and kind of speak very well and use compelling and passionate language, so they're the ideal kind of people to host and explain to us about the car. And then lastly, kind of plug the dealership, as I mentioned earlier, that your dealership is important. So show what it looks like, explain how to get there, you know, explain what your uh, kind of unique selling points as a dealership are, how long you've been in business, anything that you think is going to entice that user to choose your vehicle uh, over another vehicle and your dealership over another dealership, then make sure to mention that. But as I said, do keep it brief under kind of two minutes. So here we're looking at how to write great compelling copy. I mentioned earlier that the copy is very important. And again, you might be thinking, uh, well, where do I start with that? Well, here's a really, really useful framework of just you know, six kind of points to hit in your copy uh, that should get you well on the way to some very compelling uh, ad description. So the first thing is descriptive features. So for example, ice cold air conditioning versus just saying air conditioning. Use some kind of emotive language. Second is reliability. So confirm the nature of the vehicle's use, any vehicle reports that are available, the maintenance records. If it has a good maintenance record, by all means say that. That's definitely something that users look for. If there's any warranties available, try and reassure them. You know, one of the, well it was actually the third uh, most important thing when, when the respondents were telling us about the used car they bought. Price was the most important, as I mentioned, but reliability was third most important. So people are really concerned with this kind of thing when it comes to used cars. So the more peace of mind that you can give them in the ad copy, the better. The next is customer focus. So know your kind of know your customer, know your segments, and then sort of tell a story um, that appeals to them. So you know, if it's a kind of city car, explain that it's good in the city. Uh, or if it's more of a family car, you know, explain that it's great for, for families and the, you know, the previous owner was a family, this kind of thing. So thinking, thinking about the car, who it's for, and then tailoring your copy towards it. Uh, offer incentives, so you know, to create a sense of urgency, as I mentioned. If, if, you're, if you've got someone on the fence about responding to you and thinking about coming to see the car, if you have an incentive, obviously mention it because that's going to drive that direct response and may just tip them over the edge into getting in touch. I mentioned before why buy from us. Never forget to kind of sell your dealership uh, as once you're done kind of selling the vehicle itself. And then a strong call to action. Back to that point about contact details and uh, address and map. Make it really easy for them to see and act uh, on the next stage once you've done a good job of uh, compelling them to be interested to buy. So thinking about headlines. Here's just an example of uh, some kind of catchy headlines that can help you sort of stand out. Now notice that these don't include lots of asterisks. They're not in all caps. Some of those kind of things that you know we may think uh, help us to kind of cut through actually turn consumers off because it doesn't look all that professional. And it's not in keeping with um, you, you know the rest of the kind of site, the marketplace site they might be looking on. Using language as you cut through rather than uh, you know symbols or asterisks is really the way to go. Uh, and here you can see some examples of this. And like the copy, you know, I'd say with all this kind of thing. It's really about adopting a digital mindset, you know, testing things out, testing different headlines, uh, you know, changing up your ad copy. What works for you may not work for the next dealer. What works for one user may not work for the next user. But by adopting a kind of uh, you know, digital marketing discipline to this and treating it like a digital marketing exercise, which it is for you, is going to help you to learn lessons along the way and gradually um, be continuously improving the response that you get to your ads. So, you know, my advice would be to never stop testing this kind of thing. So, always merchandise your special features or your unique vehicle add-ons. So, here we have some examples. If winter tires are included, well, that saves some money. Mention that. Uh, tech packages, things like that. Again, uh, relating this back to the price. With some of these kind of packages and options, it is going to it is going to reflect the price slightly versus a, a rival vehicle. 
So if you know that you're asking for a little bit more, then justify where you're asking for a little bit more by mentioning some of these options and packages. So including the price, uh, we mentioned before how important price is. You know, we showed you earlier about just having a single photo, how that can kind of boost the click-through by 100%, but including the price boosts the click-through by even more, by, by huge. I mean, these numbers speak for themselves, but this is back to what I was saying earlier. Consumers are increasingly price sensitive. That's really their most prime, uh, their most paramount kind of interest is the price. So when you don't show a price, uh, they feel like, well, it doesn't induce them to click because they'll just move on to the next listing which does have a price. And secondly, they may feel that if they get in touch with you, that, that you know, the price isn't going to be right and then they've kind of wasted their time. So it's better to include the price. If you know it's above average, then justify why it is above average. If it is a great deal and it's below average, then mention that as well. But the main thing is to include the price, whatever it is. So now when it comes to pricing, there's kind of four uh, golden rules with this. So the first one is around doing your research. Obviously, you guys are well versed in this, but it is important to remember you know, things do change. The market can be quite dynamic. Always research the price of the vehicle in the current market, especially if you've held on to it for a little while. Things may have changed. So pricing competitively is going to really, that's one of the most important things that is going to help you to get click-throughs and response is having a, uh, a well-researched price. Uh, being competitive, as I mentioned, clearly explain if there are premium features that make the price higher, do that. Price consistently. So if you are listing the vehicle uh, in different places in different forms of advertising, you know, we saw earlier about how consumers are jumping around, they're using different sites, using different sources. It's more than likely if they're in the market for a particular vehicle in your local area that they're going to see your ad possibly on more than one place. They might see it on AutoTrader, they may see it on your dealer website, this kind of thing. So be consistent with the pricing. When the price is different, it uh, makes consumers suspicious and, and that is the last kind of emotion that you want them to have when uh, they're getting in touch with you and, and looking to seal that deal. And then the last point is around offering pricing options. You know, if you do offer uh, kind of financing packages or cashback incentives, you know, if lease is available, by all means mention that uh, because that's something again that may turn a consumer who is turned off by the total price. If you're offering kind of creative ways to pay, then that may get them to overcome that hurdle and get in touch with you. So if you do offer that, uh, make sure that you let them know that. So let's summarize. The car buyer journey is short and it's multi-dimensional. You know, I mentioned people are moving between these different phases, especially when it comes to the kind of dealer interaction phase that's getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So that window for you to influence, you have, it's very short in terms of your dealer website and, and your face-to-face and your -face interaction. Make use of all those sources that people are using earlier on in the journey to exert some influence there as well. And that's all about those marketplaces and review sites and other things that you can do to, uh, to try and expand your window of influence, basically. The second point is online is the most influ influential of all the available channels. So, you know, we establish clearly that online is the most used, we get that, but it's also the most influential. It's more influential than what people's friends and family say to them. So that just gives you some measure. So this is why online is so, so important and why if you're not already devoting uh, you know, the, the right proportion of your time towards it, I really advise that you begin doing so. And then lastly, you know, once you are out there in this kind of virtual world trying to merchandise yourself and cut out, cut yourself, uh, cut through, so uh, versus your kind of competition and you know, drive people from that virtual world through into the real world where you can really start influencing them and, and uh, using sales techniques, then leverage that merchandising best practice that we went through to stand out online. Don't underestimate the importance of photos, videos, great descriptions, and the pricing, as I mentioned. Um, I, you know, sometimes, I guess, it may feel that it's more important just to get the ad up there quickly and, and you know, we'll come to the description later or something like that, but it really is so important. You know, those first few clicks that you miss out on could be the people that buy the car. So adopt that kind of digital marketing discipline to testing, learning, and refining, and, and really respect the importance of cutting through uh, within marketplaces and other kind of environments like that. So uh, that is the end of the content from the webinar. I hope you enjoyed hearing some of those insights uh, from our primary research, but also some of the insights from online research we've conducted with multivariate, uh, multivariate testing. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of that, even if you knew some of that already. I think having you know, the data to kind of back up that what you knew already is correct is always helpful as well. 